Hello guys. Now most of us have suffered in one way or another skin conditions, maybe an injury on the skin that led you to getting a different conditions or even infections. And we have even suffered boils. Okay? And you've gone to hospital because of these things or some of you know of different myths that are revolve around boils. So in today's video we're going to talk about boils and get to understand the basics behind boils, how they come to occur how to manage or even how to prevent them and if you have a boil already what do you do is popping a boil uh, as bad as uh, it's thought to be or is it a way to help you heal from boils coming up now bacteria that exist and some of them are even normal flora that uh, reside on your skin can be harmful sometimes they can turn and cause inflammation and this type of inflammation occurs in different forms. Some of you have heard of folliculitis. Most of us are aware of boils. And some of us have also have heard of uh, things called cabin colds. So what is the difference? These are just forms of inflammation caused by bacteria that get access into your deeper tissues when your skin has broken or when your skin has separated, the layers of the skin have separated due to injury. And therefore it exposes you to different conditions. Now, for example, folliculitis, anytime you hear the word ITS, the TIS, sorry, that means inflammation. So folliculitis just means inflammation of the follicles, the hair follicles. So bacteria can get access to the deeper side of your uh, hair and then affect the follicles causing inflammation. That is what we call folliculitis. What about boils? Now, when your skin starts to separate or breaks or there's an injury, for example, when you have allergies like eczema, and conditions like acne your skin tends to break and bacteria get through those breakages into deeper tissues and cause pain they cause inflammation they cause accumulation of pus because of the bacterial exudates and this is what we call boils however there's another extreme uh, uh, type of boils that happens deeper and is called cabin colds. so this is a deeper one and a very severe one okay so most of you are aware of the boils and possibly folliculitis but this one also happens but uh, it's not as common as the other two now the different types actually when you talk about boils you can't you can't skip talking about pimples because they occur through the same principle and also pustules most of you have suffered this and you tend to wonder maybe you think it's fat uh, that is getting out you also think that i have very very bad pimples on my face and it lowers your self-esteem and therefore we are here to try and help you know how to handle this how to start healing from those boils and those pimples so that you retain your confidence and a smooth skin. Again, there is also a difference between warts and boils. Now, boils occur when your skin has breakage and therefore bacteria, which is specifically Staphylococcus aureus, gets access into deeper tissues, causing pain, inflammation, and infection, and then production of pus. However, warts are viral infections. So you cannot treat warts using uh, antibiotics because antibiotics are specifically for uh, boils which is bacterial infection but what you have to use antiviral agents so that is the difference now i already told you that boils will form when staphylococcus aureus this is a bacteria that gets access into your skin and deeper tissues and get, causes inflammation and pain and even production of pus as a result of bacterial exudates so you must have a broken skin for it to get access number two you can have a healthy skin but your immunity is low and therefore some of the bacteria that reside on your skin and also this staphylococcus aureus can now get access easily into your, into, into your skin deeper tissues causing you infections so therefore if you want to prevent these boils from occurring then definitely number one thing you have to do is to boost your immunity okay you have to avoid all those uh, compounds that we talk about every time we talk about uh, uh, foods sugar those things that lower your blood, uh, your, your immunity, will cause opportunistic infections. And this is where boils hail from. Okay, so that is a problem. Now, some of the risk factors for boils infections or for this staphylococcus to be active are, one, contact. You have to get in contact with a person who has staphylococcus. And that's why you are advised not to get closer to people who have boils or to get in contact with people who have boils because if your immunity is low, then definitely you'll have a chance to expose yourself to getting this infection anytime your skin has a breakage or an opening. Then diabetes mellitus, definitely sugar lowers your immunity. 
in all forms. So anytime we tell you to avoid sugar, avoid those fruits, avoid uh, simple carbohydrates and processed foods, we are trying to tell you you'll head into diabetes and diabetes kills your immunity. Once it kills your immunity, then every bacteria, even the, the normal flora, become opportunistic, which means they become infectious and can affect your health. Remember, the skin has a lot of bacteria and the skin plays as a form of immunity. So it's a barrier to immunity, okay? So it, it's, it happens to be a barrier between your, your body, protective, protecting your body from bacteria that are in your environment. And therefore, you need to protect your skin by avoiding sugar by all means. And most of you know, once you just drop those seed oils, you drop sugar, you drop those wheat products and simple carbohydrates and processed foods, your skin starts to glow. And that smoothness tells you that your skin is getting better and healthier. Therefore, you will start, uh, you will see no boils at all. And that's our aim. Number three is allergies. And here we have things like eczema. We also have acne here. And again, remember acne can come as a result of estrogen dominance, specifically in women. When you have higher levels of estrogen, then you'll end up having those skin allergies and, uh, and, and uh, acne. But for those who have allergies in general, allergies hail from consumption of sugar and wheat products. And therefore, if you get those allergies, once those uh, rashes start to pop, they open up your skin and then you can get infections because again, sugar causes uh, a low immunity. Then HIV and cancer. This one, people who have HIV and people who have cancer, already these conditions lower your immunity because they affect your white blood cell count. Once they do that, then again, yeah, opportunistic infections become prone. And drugs, drugs like chemotherapy, drugs like uh, steroids, these drugs lower your immunity. Once they do that, then of course boils will start uh, being prone. So how do you treat boils infections? There are two options. Option number one, which is basically preventive and also curative, is the diet. Healthy keto diet and fasting, prevention or avoidance of sugar, avoidance of processed foods, avoidance of seed oils and wheat products, definitely that is what you should be doing at all. That's, that's exactly how you lead a healthy life. That's how you rejuvenate your skin. That's how you start getting good hair because once you fix your gut, you start absorbing nutrients in their adequate forms. And again, once you fix your gut, then you'll not get into allergies and diabetes. That tells you your immunity starts to go up. Once it does that, then of course, boils becomes a story of the past. Then antibiotics therapy. On antibiotics therapy, there's one thing I have to mention. That if you have to uh, take antibiotics for boil infection, then you have to start by popping out that pimple to reduce or that uh, boil to produce or to, to either clear or reduce the amount of pus in that boil. The reason why I'm doing that is because, I'm saying that is because that pus contains a high amount of folates and higher amounts of purines. And these purines act as food to this bacteria, Staphylococcus aureus. So this Staph aureus feeds on folates and purines, which are high in concentration in pus. Now, once you start taking antibiotic therapy, remember antibiotic therapy actually denies this bacteria their food, okay? And so, and also DNA synthesis, and DNA synthesis for bacteria starts with the folates. So if you have an antibiotic in your system already, it's trying to help you clear this bacteria, but you are also serving this bacteria with food from uh, this pass, then you're doing zero work. You might even end up in uh, antibiotic resistance. So you need to clear that pass first so that you clear the food sources of this bacteria. You also clear the compounds that form DNA of this bacteria. Then you start uh, consumption of uh, that antibiotic therapy. Most of you will tell me, when I take an antibiotic uh, for boils, it just disappears for quite some time, then comes back. That is the reason. You're not actually treating. You're actually uh, helping this bacteria to survive, okay? So that is uh, about antibiotics. So I had to clear that on pass. Then what are the myths that we've all come across uh, during uh, this period of boils, infections, and uh, what we've had, even though most of you or some of you might have never had a chance to get boil infection. So myth number one is that you have to pop that boil for you to heal. Now, not unless you're on antibiotic therapy, you do not need to pop that boil. Remember, some of these boils heal on their own. Once your immunity just goes up, it clears those bacteria and therefore you go back to normal. So it's not a must that you pop that pimple or pop that boil for you to go through healing. That is not true. They can heal on their own, not unless you are trying to use an antibiotic therapy. Number two, uh, the boil comes as a result of bacteria, uh, fat exudates. So it's, it's a way of the body clearing fat from the system. This is not true, but possibly because you have DM, diabetes, uh, and then chances are high, you might be already obese or 
you have a lot of fat accumulating in your system and therefore maybe that's where the, this myth came from however boil infections are bacterial infections and they have nothing to do with the accumulation of fat in your system so it's not a way of the body excreting fat no please change that it's just maybe exodus from bacteria that produces that pus but it's not fat being cleared from the system <laughs> for you to clear fat from the system you have to fast and that will help you clear these risk factors and once you clear these risk factors then definitely boil starts to disappear so those are the two myths that come uh, always you hear about a boil infection so that's how we treat boils and that's how we manage boil infections so work on your immunity